Hello friends, so continuing from where we started. So, uh, this is going to be the last lecture for week 11 and your grammar. After that, we will be starting with our revision that is our uh, week 12. So, revision in week 12. Um, a couple of new items may crop up now and then, but uh, you need not worry too much about that. Next week, we are going to just go through uh, a couple of things that we have been doing so far. So, um, this is punctuation continued uh, where we stopped last time. I am going to do semicolon as you might recall we have already done colon. So, semicolon look a dot and a comma hmm? uh, capital letters. So, th just uh, do not think this is A or A is any symbol for capital. I am just giving you as an example of the A as in capital, like capital letters, ellipses, parentheses and brackets. So, this is going to be the items for today's discussion. So, um, when do we use semicolons? We use semicolons between independent clauses. You do remember your clauses, independent clauses uh, are those clauses that make sense by themselves. They are not dependent on the main clause, two clauses each having distinct identity. So, independent clauses and when, when a coordinating conjunction is omitted and or but therefore, these are removed instead we use a semicolon mark. Most commonly the semicolon is used between two independent clauses clauses that stand alone as separate sentences okay and omi, uh, what do we omit let us revise for and nor but or yet so these are omitted technically the semicolon could be replaced with a full stop since each independent clause is a complete complete sentence here the semicolon however emphasizes the connection between the two clauses we can use a conjunction we can use a full stop but the semicolon is used to emphasize the connection between the two clauses that's the relevance we also use a semicolon between independent clauses linked by a transitional expression the semicolon is also used between two independent clauses. Remember, I repeat, linked by a transitional expression, for example, accordingly, consequently, for example, nevertheless, so, thus. So, for example, heavy rainfall continues to fall, semicolon, consequently, all roads have been blocked. So, conse consequently is a a transitional exp expression we are linking we are using a semicolon to link the two clauses look at this slide and look at the examples of a semicolon in different situations through petrarch one is exposed to the qualities of medieval lyric poetry semicolon through boccaccio to the qualities of non epic medieval storytelling. See, th these are the kinds of uh, sentences that may appear for con correction also. We have done a, uh, plenty of correct the following sentence of similar nature. See how semicolon is used, how subject verb agreement takes place, how parallelism is achieved through Petrarch, through Boccaccio and see how comma is used. Sometimes uh, the paper setters may just remove a comma and give you multiple choices, which one is the best choice. You have to be attentive to that. So, two clauses of independent equal stature linked together with a semicolon. There could have been a full stop, but we are trying to emphasize the connection between the two clauses, therefore semicolon. Next sentence, the first century of this period witnessed the pinnacle of Italian literature, semicolon, the last century of Spanish and English literature, 
French literature, which along with German would culminate in the Romantic age, is less prominent during this period. Interesting sentence. Look at the semicolon first. First century, last century. Okay, so, look at the parallelism, the connection. There is a link between the two sentences. Full stop would make it very monotonous, but semicolon makes it more elegant. And I also want to draw your attention to the, the second part of this sentence or uh, this uh, passage, French literature and in parenthesis, which along with German would culminate in the Romantic age is less prominent during this period. Now, even if you say French literature is less prominent during this period, the sentence is perfectly grammatically correct. The information given in parenthesis is just adding something. You can very comfortably remove it. That is the function of a parenthesis. We are going to discuss that also. So, pay attention to that. Next one. The foremost French author of the Renaissance slash reformation era. Now, again pay attention to slash. Okay. Re Renaissance and or reformation era. So, that is how we use a slash. Now, do not overdo slashes, do not overdo any, any punctuation mark. The hallmark of a good writing, elegant writing is to use a variety of punctuation marks and a variety of uh, sentences, simple compound complex. Every sentence need not run like this. Sometimes, uh, the beauty of simple sentence uh, also has much to offer or much to appreciate. So, uh, but there should be a mix. So, coming back to this, the foremost French author of the Renaissance slash Reformation era is Michel de Montaigne, the great modern writer and perhaps greatest all time writer. So, this may be the writer's opinion and therefore, the information in parenthesis of the essay, which can be defined as a short prose examination of a subject semicolon. Indeed, it is a transitional expression. Montaigne himself coined the term essay from the French essai meaning attempt. Okay. Now, the information written uh, given in parenthesis can be eliminated, but adds so much value, but do not overdo this. It needs or it requires a higher order writer to use parenthesis so effectively. I am just drawing your attention to how these things are done. And also look at the way inverted commas are used hmm, throughout uh, this last passage. So, a short prose examination of a subject, when do we use? this uh, inverted comma, we are going to do that also. I, I have not written it here, but I am going to do inverted commas also with you. So, uh, this is when we define something, when we quote something and coin the term essay. So, uh, if you remove essay, I mean if you remove the inverted commas from essay here, then it would look very odd and confusing. What is the writer trying to tell you? But the term essay therefore, in inverted commas from the word uh, from the French word essay meaning attempt. So, all these so, uh, foreign language word given in inverted commas you can also use italics and meaning attempt. So, attempt is also because it is a meaning given. Meaning attempt means if you delete the inverted commas again it will add, al add to your confusion. The meaning would not come through. So, inverted commas are so important here. Yeah. So, quote. Look at this example now. Look at the slide here. Example of a mix of semicolon and colon in the same sentence. Look at the way these things are done. Throughout the history, comma, it has repeatedly found itself in the right place at the right time. And see the colon. English speaking Britain was the leading colonial nation in the 17th and 18th century as well as the leader of the industrial revolution in the 18th and sorry 19th century. So, um, invert is semicolon. 
in the late 19th and 20th century english is speaking america was the leading economic power and was also the forefront of the electronic and digital revolution of the late 20th century so we are talking about the english it here refers to english english speaking britain was the most important so it's a, an example why english is so important how come english come to dominate the global scene so uh, um, it has given some elaboration therefore the use of colon but if you look at semicolon why okay so semicolon is here it is used to express two independent clauses now look at this slide and read the exercise your exercise is to insert a semicolon look at it i'll read it out for you although he became one of the most famous figures in english history comma oliver cromwell began life as an ordinary country gentleman when the english civil war broke out in 1642 he was a middle aged father of five children with no military training and second one Cromwell began his Irish offensive with a massacre of the combined forces of the Catholic Confederates and the Protestant Royalists at Drogheda September 1649 look at the way dates are done only month and year so no comma and in bracket for extra information in parenthesis the following month the town of Wexford base of the Irish navy met a similar fate so semicolon go through it and here is the answer semicolon after gentleman although he became one of the most important famous figures in oliver cromwell began life as an Engli ordinary english country gentleman so this is one sentence by itself when the english civil war broke out in this he was a middle aged father of so look at the appropriacy of semicolon and the next one Cromwell began his Irish offensive with a massacre of this and the Protestant, and this at the end of this September sixteen forty nine semicolon. A clear indication that two independent sentences. The following month, the town of Wexford, base of the Irish Navy, met a similar fate. Now, from here we move on to do parenthesis. Parenthesis always used in pairs. you allow um allows you or allow you to provide additional information as we have just seen in a couple of sentences here the parenthetical material might be a single word okay it can be a fragment or multiple complete sentences yeah it should not be remember now you have to be a an extremely competent writer of english language to use parenthesis and secondly you should always remember that the material given in the parenthesis is not grammatically integral to the surrounding sentence look at the example here look at the slide the minister and his family was accused by of corruption so see uh, what does the verb agree with who or which subject does the verb agree with the minister therefore singular you are not saying minister and his family or the minister and his family were accused second sentence the minister bracket or parenthesis and his family were accused of corruption grammatically the material given in parenthesis is not counted is not integral the verb must always agree with the main material not the parenthetical material also remember when a parenthetical sentence stands on its own the closing punctuation mark for the sentence is placed inside the closing parenthesis if a complete sentence is given in parenthesis the closing punctuation mark for that sentence is placed inside the closing parenthesis look at the example here king was born yes i we have done this sentence the other day but i am now i am going to do it 
in another context. So, look at the way parenthesis has been done and punctuation mark has been done within parenthesis. King was born Michael Luther King in Atlanta on January 15, 1929. Look at the way comma is done. Dash, one of the three children of Martin Luther King Sr., pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church and Alberta and in bracket Williams King. Okay? So, that is the mother's name, maiden name perhaps, but not very important. So, therefore, in parenthesis, a former school teacher. And then, uh, some additional information, he was renamed Martin and Martin in inverted commas. He was renamed Martin without inverted commas, confusion. With Martin, you know, he was renamed what? Martin when he was about 6 years old and it is a complete independent sentence, more information in parenthesis. So, full stop within the closing parenthesis. So, remember the rule now, when a complete sentence occurs in parenthesis in the middle of a larger sentence, it should neither be capitalized nor end with a full stop, though a question mark or exclamation point is acceptable. You should also remember the distinction between brackets and parenthesis. Parentheses are round and brackets are square. You need to know more about these, then uh, there is lots of material available in books which are only on punctuations. You can also consult certain websites, but please go to very standard websites. Whatever you use, squares or round brackets, be consistent do not use one at one place and the other at another place unless and until you are very confident about the distinction between the two. The same rule as I stated yesterday or the other day about using abbreviations, whether you put M A masters of arts with a M dot or A M full stop, A full stop or M A without, okay, it does not matter as long as you are consistent throughout. Look at an example of parenthesis again. The essential humanity's defini definition of art is a beautiful human creation, okay, inverted commas. Art can be divided into two basic types, fine arts also known as, this is an abbreviation pure art, which is simply experience, example painting, sculpture, architecture and apply art, applied art also known as decorative art, which is actually used, example pottery, clothing, furniture. So, in bracket, so experienced and used and applied. So, look at the way inverted commas are used and examples are used and uh, abbreviations as well as parenthetical material. Fine art, which has always strongly influenced applied art. Now, see fine art and the subject agrees with fine art is the primary concern of essential humanities. Five great fine arts are recognized. Look at the way colon is used now painting, sculpture. So, it is a list, painting, sculpture, architecture, visual art of um, building design and look at the parenthetical material now, painting, flat visual art, sculpture, three dimensional visual arts, architecture, the visual art of building design, maybe and then look at the semicolon again. So, joining together of coordinators, coordinate clause. If you remove this semicolon, you can say and may be considered a special branch of a sculpture, music and literature, but instead of that we use a semicolon. It gives more variety and these five media are great, quote unquote, in that they arguably, now this is a, a very higher order writing, hmm? arguably. Now, what is the writer saying when they say arguably, I may, this may be my position, but perhaps you do not agree with me. So, therefore, arguably, so you may want to argue with me on this, so therefore, I agree, but this is my opinion, comprise the most expressive, the most expressive and universally 
appreciated forms of art. Go through this passage and see how punctuations are used with such variety, with greater variety. Now, here is your exercise. I want you to insert parenthesis wherever you think appropriate. All the many different styles are encompassed by the term. There are certain underlying principles that define modernist art, colon, a rejection of history and conservative values such as realistic depiction of subjects, semicolon, innovation and experimentation with form the shape, which form the shapes color with form the shapes, colors and lines that make up the work with a tendency to abstraction semicolon and an emphasis on materials, techniques and processes. Which information do you think should go in parenthesis? And here is your answer. Although many different styles are encompassed by the term, there are certain underlying principles that define modernist art. A list is given now, a rejection of therefore, a colon, please pay attention, a rejection of history and conservative values such as realistic depiction of subjects, semicolon, innovation and so look at parenthesis such as, so examples are given therefore, parenthesis, innovation and experimentation with form and what aspects of form, the shapes, colors and lines that make up the work with a tendency to abstraction semicolon and an emphasis on materials, techniques and processes. Now, see there are so many commas and parentheses, semicolon makes sense here. Why? In order to make the sentence more readable, please note it is an entire se uh, sentence running because there is no full stop anywhere. So, you cannot just use um, a comma all over the place. So, therefore, semicolon makes it more readable and uh, grammatically more uh, structured and acceptable. From there we move on to capital letters and remember I am just revising, but you uh, uh, look at your uh, Ren and Martin grammar book. Capital letters are used for the first letter of people's names. There may be exceptions when people do not want to, their names to be used in capital letters. For example, the great um, poet E. E. Cummings, he always used lower caps or bell hooks who uses lower caps to denote their names, but not all, not everybody does that. For the first letters of people's names, capitals, the second names, capitals, proper nouns. Okay. Uh, countries, names of countries, continents, states, cities, paintings, books, monuments, important events, newspapers, magazines, journals, wars, films, awards, abbreviations, beginning of a new sentence, all demand capital letters. Now, look at this sentence, look at this passage and you uh, observe the capitalization. Any number of historic moments in the civil rights struggle have been used to identify Martin Luther King Jr. So, see even Jr. is used in capitals, J R, mixed capitals, prime mover of the Montgomery bus boycott, it is an event keynote speaker at the march on Washington event, youngest Nobel Peace Prize laureate award. King was born Michael Luther King in Atlanta, one of the three children of Martin Luther King Sr., pastor of Ebenezer. So, place, name of a church, Baptist church and Alberta Williams King. So, school teacher may not be in capital letters, it is a common noun, but names pro and places and events all in capital letters at the beginning of every sen new sentence capital letters. Now, look at this again, another king, 
Stephen King. Kings, look at the use of apostrophe because I am going to do apostrophe also with you. Kings, it, so it is in italics, okay? Because it is the title of a novel. When you say gone with the wind, cast away, forest gump, okay? Or um, all these are names uh, or proper nouns. So, you have to use them in italics. While writing, you cannot use italics, I mean while writing in hand. So, you use inverted commas. So, King's it is all about slow dread and look at dash here, specifically the slow lingering nightmares that frighten children. So, proper noun and title of a novel. Second sentence, walk in the footsteps of your Neolithic ancestor. So, Neolithic is a certain age in history, therefore, so Renaissance, Reformation, Neolithic, so all the Paleolithic, so these are denoting something, an important event in history, capital letters. At Stonehenge Place, one of the wonders of the world and the best known prehistoric monument in Europe. The next one, Picasso actively created works of cubists, so na name of a a, a style of painting, art for around 10 years. Within this anal, uh, time span, his cubist style subtly evolved from analytic cubism to synthetic cubism. So, names of certain styles, therefore, in capitals. Again, look at this. A watershed moment for the development of cubism was the posthumous ret retrospective of Paul Cezanne's work at the Salon d'Autam in 1907, Cezanne's use of genric forms to simplify nature was incredibly influential to both Picasso and Braque. In the previous year, comma, Picasso was also introduced to non-western art, seeing Iberian art in Spain and African influence art by Matisse and at the Trocadero Anthropological Museum. So, these are the lists that Picasso was introduced to and therefore, influences on Picasso's art. Picasso by the way is a great modern art artist, you know, great artist painter of modernist period. He was from Spain. What drew Picasso to these artistic traditions was their use of an abstract or simplified representation of the human body rather than the naturalistic forms of the and look at the capital again. European Renaissance tradition. So, a tradition, a style, so therefore, in capital, Europe always in capital. Look at this slide, example of capital letters, references, under references. So, when you are quoting, citing and referring to books or any year. So, Museum of Modern Art, Cubism, a book, Miami Dade College, Cubism, a new vision, it is a book. Uh, and a, a book by someone called Riold S. So, S. Riold, so cubism. So, title of the book and proper nouns, names of people, names of museums in capital, names of college in capitals. Look at this slide now. This is your exercise. I want you to insert capital letters wherever necessary. Go through the passage. In 1934, a young man named Arnold Samuelson was fresh out of journalism school at the University of Minnesota when he read One Way Across a short story by Ernest Hemingway. The story later became part of Hemingway's fourth novel, um, To Have and Have Not. The quotation should be on towards to, facing towards T, not novels L. Samuelson admired the story so much that he traveled from Minnesota to Florida to meet Hemingway and ask him for writing advice as chronicle in a 1935 article published in Esquire. Monologue to the Maestro, a high seas letter Hemingway told and there should be a close inverted commas after letter. Hemingway told the young writer he should only compare himself to the great dead writers, not contemporary ones. Insert capitals wherever necessary. Take a moment. Here is your answer. 
In 1934, a young man named Arnold Samuelson was fresh out of journalism school. Now look at University of Minnesota, it should be in capital letters. When he read and then title of a story, one way across, so all first letters of each word, capital letters. The story later became part of Hemingway's fourth novel, To Have and Have Not. This can also be in capital, uh, sorry, in italics. Here it is in inverted commas, you, you can use either way. Sam Wilson admired the story so much that he traveled from Minnesota to Florida, capital cities to meet Hemingway as chronicled in a 1935 article published in Esquire, a very respected magazine and title of the article. Look at the slide please, monologue to the maestro, a high seas letter all capitals. First words, Hemingway told the young writer he should not, he should only compare himself to the great dead writers, not contemporary ones. Now, um, from here we move on to inverted commas. I have been talking a lot about inverted commas today and you have already seen what they look like. To have and have not, monologue to the maestro. So, inverted commas, used to mark off words spoken in a passage of direct speech to show that the words enclosed are a quotation. They are also used uh, in order to um, mark off certain expressions and phrases, quote unquote. They can be single or double. Do not worry too much about that, but again as usual be consistent. Look at this slide now and see how inverted commas are used. At 11.40 pm, the lookout sounded the alarm and telephoned the bridge saying iceberg right ahead. Now, this is a, a, an essay on the Titanic. So, quoting someone, iceberg right ahead. The 70, uh, 1785, now look at the single inverted commas, charted to the nobility. Now, it, this is an inverted comma because it is it's a, it's a charter, okay. it is a bill, it is a declaration. Okay. So, inverted commas established them as separate estate in Russian society and assured their privileges. Next one, the late professor Richard Atkinson, leading authority on Stonehenge, once replied to the question about the purpose of this monument and inverted comma because we are quoting direct speech. There is one short, simple and perfectly correct answer. We do not know and we shall probably never know. Thoru's last words were, now comes good sailing. Now again look at this slide for more information on inverted commas, more examples. Henry David Thoreau was born as David Henry Thoreau in 1817. He only began using Henry. Okay, so, we were looking at essays and Montaigne and meaning of essays attempt. So, Henry okay, or Martin Luther King started, he called himself Martin. Okay. So, that is him. So, he began using Henry as his first name later in life, although he never legally changed it. His place of birth was Concord. Massachusetts. His family is described, you know, quoted by someone as one of modest means. We do not know poor or middle class or upper middle class, but quoted by someone or described by mm, some people and having modest means. Now, look at the slide here and I would, I want you to insert inverted commas wherever necessary. This is your exercise. In some areas, the Vikings became so powerful, they built temporary bases. These temporary bases sometimes became permanent. Later, many Vikings stayed in Brit Britain. Many English words used today come from these ancient Vikings. Words like sky, leg, skull, egg, crawl, lift and take are from the old languages of the far northern countries. Insert inver inverted commas wherever necessary. Here is your answer and look at the words. Many English words used today come from these in ancient Vikings, words like 
Sky, leg, skull, egg, crawl, lift and take are from the old languages of the far northern countries. So, that is the way we use inverted commas. From here, from there I will move on to another aspect, apostrophe. This is a contracted form, most often used in contracted form like do not, will not, okay, should not, can't. So, apostrophe. You want to uh, uh, say it is kept on the table, it is kept on the table, contracted. So, it is and it is. What is the difference? Here it is expanded as it is, this is its, the book and its contents. So, possessive, we do not say the book and it is contents, the book and so it is a possessive way, there is no contraction here. The book and its style, the film and its style, not it is, it is not a contracted form, contracted form should have an apostrophe. Also remember apostrophe plus s, apostrophe plus s, not s, apostrophe plus s cannot be used as a plural. So, apostrophe is used for possession, for contraction, uh, for possession let us say Sarita's car, Lana's lipstick, parents advice. Sylvia's poetry, but uh, all these are very well known and very common kinds of expressions. But what happens when you want to say James car or Jones's house, do we say apostrophe like this or this? So, there are differing views, my advice both are correct. Okay but be consistent. So, after an s, the if there is an another s, you want to denote uh, possession. So, apostrophe. We also use an apostrophe to denote time 1990s. So, it is written as a specific time in history, the 70s show, the 80s fashion. And from here, we move on to talk about ellipses. These are three dots. Ellipses is a set of three stops indicating an omission. Each full stop should have a single space on either side, except when adjacent to a quotation mark, in which case there should be no space. Ellipses are most useful when we quote material. There is a lengthy material and you use quotation. in. While quoting speech, we also often say that you know sometimes it may even denote a tra trailing of thoughts. People are not very sure, so they leave a sentence incomplete. So, dot dot dot. Ellipses are also used by very higher order writers. So always be careful, as always in every item, every bit of punctuation mark. Don't overuse. Always be very careful read a lot in order to understand how these marks are used. So, thank you very much. That brings us to the end of week 11.